lost once, but a lot of his fights have been very, very close, mostly because he is not a great puncher, and he admits he's not. He knows he doesn't have the killer instinct, really. He has hurt guys, but he has a very tough time putting them away, and that often makes his fights very, very close. This fight here against Asif Dar was just one of many uh, real brawls that Marshall has been in. When I say brawl, I don't mean a brawl between two guys who are trying to whack each other out, but just a couple of guys who are going to take and give a lot of punches. That's right, and that's one thing about uh, Tony Marshall. He does take more punches than the average boxer with his kind of a style, which makes for an interesting fight. Another interesting thing about this fight is both these guys are guys who have made their living as boxers, and yet both feel they have to start whacking guys out if they're going to get the respect. That seems to be something that's just a sign of the times. Well, Fighters don't feel they can be boxers. Not only that, that's what the fans pay to come and see. Well, we'll see that's what they're both looking for tonight Beasley and Marshall they'll be getting it going and to meet them here's Max Weisberg Max good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Fernwood Resort and Country Club here in Bushkill Pennsylvania where tonight top rank incorporated in association with fisticuff productions and the undisputed undefeated king of beers Budweiser presents professional boxing for your entertainment all bouts this evening are sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission. Let's get things started with our first bout of the evening, scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior middleweight division. The referee for this contest is Joe Salsi. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with the gold trim. He weighs in at 154 pounds from Detroit, Michigan, with a record of 17-1-1, one and one, five by KO. Please welcome Lonnie Honeybee Beasley. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the gold, green, and red trim. He weighs in at 154 pounds from Albany, New York, with a record of 13, two and four, three by KO. Let's hear it for Tony Marshall. Well, the last time we were here at the Fernwood Resort in Pennsylvania, there was a lot of things that didn't fall into the category of going by the rules, but let's talk about them anyway. All right, well, if they follow the rules here in the Keystone State, the three knockdown rules in effect, there is a standing eight count, the doctor can stop the fight, the 10-point must scoring system, three judges score the fight, and a fighter can be saved by the bell only in the last round. Pretty much as they are in almost every other state, aren't they? <laughs> as we take a look at Lonnie Beasley in the corner, Beasley with a record of 17-1-1, one, and one, only five knockdowns. Outs. And Tony Marshall, on the other hand, as we said, these guys really mirror images of one another. Marshall 13 and 2. He's had four draws. And there again, that's something that is going to befall a guy who fights like Marshall does. Right. Well, between them, they have five. You know, that's a lot of draws for two fighters with barely 35 fights between them. So you know that they're in a lot of close fights, not many knockouts, but a lot of punches thrown and landed. Both wearing black trunks with a yellow stripe. Marshall, you know what flag that is? I just happen to know this. <laughs> That's why you asked me, yes, because you know I don't it's know a it. setup. It's Guyana. <laughs> Guyana, actually. Okay. Wow. How did you know that? I only knew it because a couple of fights ago, he had the word Guyana on his, on his trucks with a little flag. And I, okay. It's the same flag, and so I picked right up on that. So Very good. I'm a student of the game. Yes. <laughs> That's what I like about you. The powers of observation are just incredible. I'm a student of trunks. <laughs> It was interesting. Both these guys talked about how they feel they have to start knocking guys out. And I find that very interesting. The two guys who, who are good boxers. Well, you know, it's been traditional in boxing that great boxers who are strictly great boxers don't sell a lot of tickets. Perhaps Muhammad Ali being the exception. But most people would rather see a Mike Tyson come in and belt somebody out. That's what they pay to see. And it's interesting because a lot of times you don't get a lot of action with fighters like that. But that's what the fans really come for. I mentioned before we go too far, Al Bernstein will rejoin us on Thursday night at the Villa Roma. Participating in a rodeo in Colorado, he finished fifth, I'm sure America wants to know, fifth in the team penning competition. Wow. <laughs> that really is, you know, quite an accomplishment. I know that you also know quite a bit about team penning. Oh, yeah, much as I do the Guyana flag. <laughs> In the meantime, Beasley is landing most of the good punches in this round, especially he had a good left hook just a few seconds ago that landed right on the chin of Marshall. There's a couple of right hands, too. Both these fighters are extremely confident. You know, again, when we talk to the fighters the night before a fight, you usually get a pretty good idea of who really feels they can win and who doesn't. Both these guys did. 
that's a good sign. You know, I was talking with Bob Miller, the trainer manager of Tony Marshall today, and he reminded me, first of all, that Marshall, although he gets hit a lot, has never been down. He's got a really good chin, although he seemed to stumble a little bit there after landing a good shot. Hard to tell if the left hand of Beasley, I think he was a little off balance there. I really do think he tripped. He's getting hit solid with a lot of those punches, Barry, especially the right hand. Well, Beasley may have made a good point in the fact that Marshall maybe doesn't move his head as much as he should. He's spitting blood now. He's been hit solidly several times in this first round. Very good first round for Lonnie Beasley. Here's a left hand from Marshall, but it's a slapping left hand as they exchange shots. running engine is a torture chamber. Marshall's head moves very well after he gets hit with that <laughs> left hand from not, not exactly the idea. No. <laughs> pretty good first round for Beasley, though. Actually, it was, a, it was a good first round overall and better for Beasley. Here are the numbers in the first round, and both were pretty productive. Yeah, I thought that Beasley had a bigger edge than that, but um, I think that his edge was mainly in the harder punches, but there was a very good right hand by Marshall. Marshall said he's been working on setting down on his punches, bending his knees when he throws his punches, trying to get a little bit more power. You know, what makes a hard puncher is a mystery, Barry, and I've talked to trainers about this, I've done stories on it, and everybody seems to have a different idea of what makes punching power. It's very, very hard to teach. It's really hard to pick up later in your career or even, you know, after 17 or 18 fights. Ray Leonard just talked about the pronation of punches, and he always felt that that was what made a power punch, how you turn your hand into a punch. Well, you know, Ray's opinion is a lot better than mine on yeah, this, that's mine. for sure. I think Tony pronated that right hand pretty well right there. Wow, <laughs> Beasley right back with his own right hand. These guys basically can't miss each other so far. Nice right hand from Marshall. Marshall, it's interesting enough, his 19 fights is... Good combination for Marshall. He's only fought one fighter with a losing record. So they've put him in there against some tough guys. No, he has not been babied at all, that's for sure. One thing that I find interesting in this fight is that these are two guys with reputation of being boxers, and they're not really jabbing very much. They're both pretty much loading up. And you just saw it again when Marshall threw that right hand. That goes back to what we were alluding to earlier, I think. Yep. Knockouts sell tickets. You know, I think probably the best case in point of that is a fighter like Mike McCallum. He's an excellent boxer who never has been a big crowd pleaser because of that, because fans really come to see somebody get knocked unconscious, you know, rightly or wrongly. <laughs> Marshall heeding his corner's advice to go side, side to side. Most of the pressure in this fight, Barry, coming from Lonnie Beasley. Well, Marshall has done some good counter-punching in the past and is doing it again tonight. Let's get ready to rumble with boxing bloopers and KOs and ESPN home video. Filled with super knockouts, blooper knockouts, 